Ultium Charge. Three six. Not another GM marketing gimmick. All right, what is it this time? Okay, well, this is GM's answer to the Tesla Supercharger Network, I guess. It's a partnership with seven charging networks. Blink, ChargePoint, EVConnect, EVGo, Flow, GreenLots, and SEMA Connect. So that's 60,000 chargers across the U.S. and Canada that GM owners will be able to charge at using GM apps. Uh, hang on a second, uh, uh -huh. Mr. GM. Uh -huh. I didn't hear you say anything about Electrify America. Uh, right, correct. EA is missing from the list. Kind of a big hole in the plan, if you ask me, because Electrify America provides uh, 600 high-speed chargers. Yeah, most of these 60,000 chargers on these seven networks are level two. I went searching the other day through, uh, for instance, the Blinks map. Uh, almost everything was level two. ChargePoint was a little better. They have about 350 of these high-speed chargers, but those are only like 50 or 125 kilowatt chargers. Uh, EV Connect is pretty light on DC fast charging. Wait, does that one show none in New England? Yeah, none that I could find in Massachusetts, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, or Rhode Island, and only two in Connecticut. EVgo has over 800 DC fast chargers, but most of those are 50 kilowatts. So that's, you know, good, uh, but not great. The Flow Network is really light on DC fast chargers, and many of them were the same ones that I found on ChargePoint. So like, Whose network is whose here? Green Lots claims they'll have 160 DC fast chargers in the US by the end of this year. And Green Lots is not my favorite network. I mean, it has a really crappy user experience every time I've encountered one. Yeah, I mean, so there you have it. Uh, about 59,000 level two chargers and about 1,000 DC fast chargers. Most of them not that fast. Now, a lot of these chargers are in weird places, uh, like behind hotels or at parking garages down below or, you know, places that aren't that convenient for most drivers. So to me, it's like when you hear about like one of those new movie subscriptions you can sign up for. And it's like, we have, we tons, have tons of thousands of thousands movies. movies. And then you like go through some of the movies and you're like, what? I've never heard of these movies. Yeah, I mean, is this going to be the seamless charging experience like the Tesla supercharging network? You know, pull in, plug in, walk away? I highly doubt it. I mean, we've all used these chargers before, like on Blink and on, you know, SEMA Connect and on Green Lots. It's a hodgepodge of kind of weird interfaces and hardware. And the other point for me here is that these all have low stall counts, which means you pull in and instead of having eight or 10 or 12 chargers to choose from, you usually have one or two. So if one is broken or taken up, you're kind of dumb out of luck. Right. And now I want to, you know, go back. They can use Electrify America. It's just not through the GM right. experience. Right. And you could argue even that, like, if you drove a Tesla, that uh, if you wanted to charge at any of these chargers that you'd randomly stop at, that it would be inconvenient for you to have to go get that specific app. Like, I don't have the Blink app. So every time I see a Blink charger, I'm just like... I guess I won't charge there because I don't want to have to deal with it in the right. moment because I'm like, oh, I need to go to a concert. Oh, I need to go to the museum. And well, it's like, there's the blink charger. And I'm like, do I want to spend half an hour setting that up? So, I mean, it's not terrible as like a safety net. The details are really light, though, on what is this GM app going to offer? Are you going to be able to see in the car when there's an available charger like you can with the Tesla supercharger network? Because if you can't, then, you know, going all out of your way to get to a charger that's full doesn't help you. And I just want to ask also about cost. I mean, you know what you're going to get at a Tesla supercharger. You you know it's going to basically be charging the current rate of electricity. But a lot of these had different rules, like first five minutes or five dollars. And the, then it's a dollar after that. Right. It's like all these complicated things. And it's like, uh, I just want to know what I'm getting. Well, and the reason for that is usually that charger is owned by the business or, you know, right. the the landowner of wherever the charger is. And so they get to set the rules. I mean, there, there's lots of different ones where it's like, oh, if you charge here for longer than an hour, then we'll start to charge you like $15 every 10 minutes. And you're like, that's a lot of money. And so this, you're sprinting back to your car like, oh, money's just flowing out of my account. And this brings up another question. What if you're like a hotel owner that installed a charger thinking it was for your guests? And now all of a sudden, all these mock -E's are showing up that you didn't know were going to come right. and aren't going to your hotel. And now they're using your bathrooms. It's like, are you going to complain to GM and get that charger taken off the network? Yeah, it's level two chargers are weird, man. I mean, they're super when you need one. You're just like, oh, thank God this one yeah, is Yeah, like here. overnight at a hotel? Great. Right. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know Clips. You can watch full episodes of Tesla Time News on Mondays and in-depths on Fridays. Just click the link down below to head over to the Now You Know channel.